In this video, we're going to start looking at inequalities. Inequalities differ from equations. When we solve an equation, we have a specific or specific values that satisfy that equation. So, for example, if we had an equation 3x minus 4 is equal to 0, we would add 4 to both sides. 3x is equal to 4. Dividing both sides by 3, we can see that x is equal to 4 thirds. So this is a specific value. If we had a quadratic equation, we could have two specific values. When we solve an inequality, we're going to have a set of values that satisfy that inequality. So for example, if we had 3x minus 4 is greater than 0, we could say that 3x is going to be greater than 4 by adding 4 to both sides, and then x is going to be greater than 4 thirds by dividing both sides by 3. So this gives us a single solution. This gives us a set of solutions. So x might be 10, x might be 30. It's just got to be bigger and strictly bigger than 4 thirds. So the technique that we use to solve these is very similar. We just have to be careful, though, when it comes to negative numbers. If we're multiplying or dividing by a negative number, the inequality sign changes. So let's go ahead and just look at some basic notation. If I have now x is greater than 7, this is saying that I can choose a number bigger than 7. So it could be 8, it could be 9, it could be 10. It means that I can't include the 7. If I had x is equal to or greater than 7, then we could. So, a particular value that would satisfy this inequality could be 9, it could be 10.7, it could be now 103.01. All of these satisfy this inequality. This one just here, 7 satisfies it, 93.1, we could have 1067.4. They all satisfy this inequality. If we had x is less than 7, the number we're looking for is less than 7, so we could have 6, we could have 5.1, we could have negative 1.7, but we couldn't include 7. x is equal to or less than 7, then we could include the 7, we could have negative 1, we could have 0 0.1. All of these values satisfy it. So that's what we're looking at. It isn't equal like an equation. It's just a set of values. So that is some notation. We might also look at a slightly different type of notation such that we had, for example, x is greater than 4, yet in turn equal to or less than 10. So that's one example. So the number we're looking for is between 4 and 10. We can't include 4, but we can include 10. So the integers that would satisfy this, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. They're the whole numbers that satisfy this. Quite clearly, you can have any decimal in between. All we're going to do in this video is start off by looking at some basic revision on linear inequalities. In a later video, we will consider quadratic and then quadratic and linear inequalities. So let's start off. We're asked to find the set of values of x that, which satisfy the following. So these are the inequalities, and all we need to do is find the set of values. So on the first one, 2x is greater than 1. Dividing both sides by 2, we can say that x is greater than 1 half. Now you might want to represent this on a number line. Uh, you're not always asked to, but you could if you wanted. All we would do is now have an open dot. If this is a strict inequality, we have an open dot. That means it won't include the value of 1 half, but it will be all values now to the right of 1 half on the number line. Just out of interest, if this had been now negative 2x is going to be greater than 1, what we would do here is divide both sides of the inequality by negative 2 but we would need to change the sign over. So if we're multiplying or dividing by a negative number, we change the sign over. 
Now, if you just consider, if we just added for 2x to both sides and subtracted for 1, what we'd have is negative 1 is greater than 2x. So 2x. And then, let's just get rid of that. Don't need that. Don't know why we've got a line. And then, at this stage, if I divide by 2, let's just divide by 2, we can say now that negative 1 over 2 is going to be greater than x. So you can see by rearranging, we're going to get the same result. So just be careful with that. Okay, next one. 3x minus 1 is equal to or less than 6. So writing this out, 3x minus 1 is equal to or less than 6. Adding 1 to both sides, 3x is equal to or less than 7. And dividing through by 3, x is equal to or less than 7 thirds. So that's just a fraction. So the number we want is less than 7 thirds. Again, if you wanted to uh, draw that on a number line, we would have now uh, the dot, and the dot would be at 7 thirds. This time, it's inclusive of. When we have a, an inclusive of, we go ahead and shade now this circle right here. So the dot is a closed dot. If it's a strict inequality that doesn't include the value, then it's an open dot. So let's go ahead and draw this, and then we will be now going to the left. Sometimes you'll see an arrow put on here. Perfectly fine if you do. It um, doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to put on here that that is going to be the value, and that is going to be 7 thirds. So we've got all of these values that we could have before. So, for example, this point right here could be 0. That's included, negative 1, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's look at this one. We could subtract 2 from both sides, and I'll show, uh, I'll do this a couple of different ways. So if I do that, I've got negative 5x is strictly less. Now, subtracting 2 is going to give negative 5. I can divide both sides of the inequality by negative 5, and that will give me that x is going to be greater. Remember, we need to switch this over. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is going to give positive 1. So x would be greater than 1. If you wanted, you could rearrange this. So we could start with 2 minus 5x is less than negative 3. Adding 3 to both sides and adding 5x to both sides, we'd end up with this scenario right here. But 5x is strictly greater than 5. And then dividing both sides by 5, we could see that x is greater than 1. Okay, let's look at the next one. So on this one, we've got now, and again, we can just rearrange this or we can uh, divide through by the negative. I'm going to do now the, on here, we're going to have 4 minus the 3.6. So 4 minus the 3.6 will be equal to or greater than 0.2x. So this is going to give me 0.4 is equal to or greater than 02 x. Now, at this stage, I can divide both sides. This isn't a negative number. It's entirely up to us. We could go ahead and do that. If I want to, that is essentially saying now that this is 4 divided by 2, so 2 is going to be equal to or greater than x. So, we could have 2, we could have 1, we could have negative 10. They are the set of values that satisfy that inequality. If you wanted at this stage, if you wanted to write now that this was going to be uh, two-fifths is equal to or greater than one-fifth x, then we can see now writing those as fractions, you might find that slightly easier. Okay, E, we've got uh, x's on both sides, unknowns on both sides. So again, I would treat this initially like an equation. So 2x minus 1 is less and strictly less than 3x minus 5. I'm going to take 2x on both sides and add 5 to both sides. And that is going to give me now that x is going to be strictly greater than 4. So the set of values that satisfy that, x is greater than 4. OK, let's look at this one. We'll expand it out. So 3x minus 3 is equal to or greater than 10 minus 5x. So adding 5x to both sides, 8x... And adding 3 to both sides, 13, 8x is going to be equal to or greater than 13. And then dividing both sides by the 8, x is equal to or greater than 13 eighths. And I'm going to leave that as a fraction. 
Okay, this one we've got P's and Q's. So let's expand this out and our answer will be X in terms of P and Q. So we'll have now 6 and then we will have now minus 2PX and that is going to be equal to or less than 4PX minus Q. So I'm going to add the Q to both sides. 6 plus Q is going to be equal to 6P, uh, sorry, it's going to be equal to or less than, uh, less than 6PX. Now, at this stage, we could just consider that P must be greater than 0. So technically, we can't really solve this because we don't know if P is positive or negative. So what I'm going to do is just simply assume, so for now, uh, we'll say that this is going to be uh, 6 plus Q over 6P, and that's going to be equal to uh, or less than X, and we can say now when P is going to be equal to or greater than 0. So I'll leave it in that particular form, because if it's a negative, then we'd have to go ahead and change that. So that's what uh, we would end up getting. Again, you could write that as a, a different inequality, but I'll state that uh, when P is equal to or greater than zero, this is what we end up with. Now, if we wanted to write that when P is uh, equal to or less, uh, in fact, we're going to have to have P strictly greater than zero on this one, as we can't have division. Let's put P greater than zero. So what we'd have is like so, and we could say that this is 6 plus Q over 6P is equal to or greater than X by switching this over when P is going to be less than 0. So you can't have P 0, can't have division by 0, and uh, that's what we end up with. And certainly we can't have 0 here anyway because we'd end up now with, uh, we'd have no value of X in here and it would be an inequality in Q. Um, so there we go, nice and logical. So there we go, linear inequalities, um, and that's what we'd end up with. And in the next video, we will look at quadratic inequalities and then go on to look at both linear and quadratic.